Hard to believe they only built 12 of these, and we'll take a look on Muscle Car of the Week. Any 45-year-old muscle car is going to have a bunch of stories, and this week's car, a 1970 Dodge Challenger convertible with a 426 Hemi, uh, definitely has some cool stories to tell. Uh, the history of this car is known, which is pretty interesting, because a lot of times when you see a car today, that history isn't known. But in this particular case, uh, the car was bought originally back in 1970 by an anesthesiologist named Langford Palmer. And the story goes is that Palmer was friends with a uh, Dodge dealer, Jackson Dodge, in Poplar Bluffs, Missouri. And he was buddies with the owner of the dealership, and they used to play checkers and stuff together. And one night over a checkers game, uh, Mr. Palmer said he wanted to buy this Challenger convertible, but it was an expensive car. So the dealer made a, an offer to Langford, and he said, look, I'll sell you this car at our cost if you help us use it to sell more cars. And what he meant by that is he wanted Mr. Palmer to go out and street race this thing to get a reputation knowing that these cars were hard to beat in hopes to increase traffic to Jackson Dodge. And it worked. You know, it's not something you'd hear about today. Uh, but the deal went off and uh, Palmer was king of the streets and sales at Jackson Dodge apparently did pretty well. It's hard to imagine that a car that looks this good and performed as well as it did was limited to such low production numbers. But I really think it just was a question of economics. I mean, that 426 Hemi under the hood added almost 30% to the price of the car. But that's not the end of the story. Palmer eventually sold this car to a Ford dealer, and the Ford dealer pulled the Hemi engine out of it and installed it in his boat. And when you think of a one of nine car that's worth well into the seven figures and pull the engine out and use it in a boat, I mean, it just doesn't make sense today. But back then, that's kind of what happened. So the Ford dealer put a smaller engine in the car and eventually sold it. Well, that's not the end of the story either. Well, a gentleman named Jim Lynch happened to cross the engine at the machine shop because whoever brought this engine in to get work done couldn't pay the bill. So the machine shop was trying to sell the engine. Mr. Lynch tracked down the engine numbers through the Chrysler office and actually located the car and reunited the original Hemi engine with the 70 Challenger convertible and had the car restored. Lynch brought the car to Roger Gibson for a complete restoration in the early 90s. Now when you restore a car like this that is uh, ridiculously low in production but also very, very desirable, uh, you've got a couple options when you restore it because you can either make it uh, as nice as it was when it was originally brand new or you can, as they say, over restore it and make it nicer than it was new. And in this case, uh, the crew did everything they could to make this car as original as possible to keep this car looking exactly like the day it was built. When you open the hood, you're greeted with every Dodge fan's dream, the 426 Hemi. And it's just an awesome presentation because this car has a fantastic restoration on it. It was actually used in several issues of a Mopar magazine to demonstrate how to properly restore a Hemi car. Just looks beautiful. The 1970 Challenger was very popular. Uh, it was a brand new design for 70. It's got a, a brother in the Plymouth Cuda, which is a very similar car in size, um, but kind of like the uh, Camaro Firebird or Mustang Cougar relationship, they're similar but different. Uh, the Challenger is actually a little bit longer than the Cuda, and it was marketed to be a little more upscale than the Cuda. So it, uh, it's got definitely different sheet metal and a different look but overall, it's still a very similar car. It's built on the same e-body platform. The 426 Hemi was one of the many engines you could get in this platform, and when uh, Dodge engineers came up with this design, their goal was to be able to produce a very versatile car that would come with anything from a six-cylinder all the way up to the 425 horsepower, 490 foot-pound 426 Hemi under the hood. Uh, this particular car has uh, the torque flight automatic transmission behind the Hemi, uh, and it is a convertible. And they made 12 total, nine for U.S. sales, and three additional for the export market. And it's pretty wild to think that out of the almost 77,000 1970 Dodge Challengers built, there were about a dozen made with this motor.
This car has a really interesting dashboard. You've got four big round gauges with very fine needles and defined numbers. The speedometer goes to 150 miles an hour. The tachometer goes to 8,000 RPM, and it's got three different colors on the scale. There's a four-way gauge for oil, fuel level, temp, and electrical power. And then the clock is just insane. It's got the hours and the minutes in the inner ring, and then an outer ring for seconds with a sweeping second hand. And it's showing 76,000 miles, so this thing has gotten some use. And this car does live up to that luxury image. Uh, it's got power steering, uh, the console with the bucket seats, uh, it's got the rally wheel package, uh, an AM radio. Uh, the dashboard and the console trim are all done in wood grain. Uh, of course, it's got an electric clock, and a tachometer. Uh, and other things that are interesting about this particular one is that it still has all of the original paperwork with it going all the way back to the original bill of sale from Jackson Dodge. It's reported that this was the second one built of the nine U.S. Hemi Challenger convertibles. And uh, some people believe that this was actually the first car to hit the streets. The color is interesting. It's uh, kind of a metallic dark green with a green interior. Uh, but it's got a lot of options on the car, which kind of adds up to a high price tag, and that's one of the reasons why they didn't sell a whole lot of these cars. Uh, this thing brand new was, I think, over 4900 bucks. So you could buy a lot of car for $4,900, and uh, only nine people in the U.S. chose to spend that on the Challenger convertible with the Hemi. And it's one of the many Hemi cars in the Brothers collection, but I think this one is really, really unique. So this ultra-low production Hemi convertible is basically irreplaceable, but is it too nice to drive? Would you drive it? Let us know, maybe, on our Facebook page. And you can see more of this car on our website at MuscleCarOfTheWeek.com. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll never miss an episode of Muscle Car of the Week.